Okay, and now let us uh, let us go immediately to the definition of integrable functions. So integrability, integrals, integrability, and integrable functions. Okay, and uh, the definition, I give you immediately the definition, that solves the problem. The problem is somewhat finding the best upper sum and the best lower sum in such a way that uh, we trap only one value here. And uh, so this uh, idea of best and worst, it is vague, but now we know enough analysis in order to give it a rigorous statement. Hmm? So let me repeat the framework. We have a, a couple of points, A and B, with B larger than A, a function from the closed and then bounded interval A, B to R, the function has to be bounded. We do not require anything else. Bounded is necessary in order to have this infimum, this infima of every subinterval of the partition and the suprema finite. Okay? So this is necessary. But for the rest, we have that the quantity and here we introduce this strange symbol, this sort of big S of smooth sigma. A, B, and we put here a line, an upper line like that. F of X dx is equal to the infimum among all the partition P, the infimum of the upper sums. And this is called upper integral. of the function f in the interval a, b. Okay, so this is a very important uh, uh, definition because it replaces the idea, the intuitive notion of best upper sum. What is the best upper sum? Remember that the upper sum is uh, an upper bound for the area, so you can look at it uh, as being an approximation of the area you want to compute from above. Of course, the best approximation from above is the lowest one. It is clear, because if it is from above, you want to minimize the difference between the approximation from above and the area you want to compute. And in order to minimize this difference, you have to reduce, as far as it possible, this, uh, this uh, upper sum, this uh, bound from above. And what is the best reduction you can have? It is the infimum. You cannot say the minimum because partitions are a lot. You don't know whether there is really a minimum, but you know that there is an infimum. Okay. And notice that uh, we will see that later that such, such an infimum really exists. Uh, now I have a problem here with notability. Okay. And uh, analogously, the quantity... which is the integral with a lower line from a to b of f of x dx, 
that is the supremum of the lower sums, for exactly for the same reason. The best lower sum is the highest one. And this is called lower integral. of the function f in the interval a b. Now go back to the asterisk inequality. I go back to this asterisk inequality. So here we have the best lower sum, which is the highest one. Best lower sum is a sort of abuse of language because it is a supremum. So perhaps there is not such a lower sum, but it is uh, uh, something like uh, a bit more than the best lower sum. Okay? It is the highest value you can tend to by making lower sums. Okay? And at the same time, with the integral, we have the best upper sum, so the lowest one. So by asterisk, that we update. We have uh, that uh, S F P will be less or equal than its supremum, which is the lower integral, f of x dx. But since fp is less than the area we want to define, of course, the supremum is the lowest between the upper sum, so the supremum cannot exceed this area. And it is the same from the other side. Here you have upper integral a and b, f of x dx which is less than capital SFP. Mm -hmm. Capital SFP, remember, is larger or equal than A. Okay, now the interesting inequality now is this one. The interesting inequality is this one that tells you that uh, what we want now is that uh, there is only, va only one value here trapped uh, not between the lower and the upper sum, but between the lower and the upper integral. But notice that here, uh, these two are numbers. They do not depend on any partition. So now the only possibility of trapping one value here is that the lower integral is equal to the upper integral. And now we give the basic definition. The basic definition is the following. A bounded function f from a, b to r is called, is said to be integrable according to Riemann theory F It's lower integral equals its upper integral. Okay, then the quantity like that. A, B, with no lines, no upper, no lower lines, just A, B, F of X, DX, which is defined as the lower integral, F of X, DX, which in this case happens to be equal to the upper integral, A, B, 
f of x ds dx this is called the integral of the function f in the interval a b and this denoted by okay as i already said the integral between a and b of f of x dx but also integral sometimes the interval is put here, in the upper side, in the, uh, sorry, in the lower side of the, the sign of integral, and sometimes you can also find this notation, integrals i, f of x, dx, where you introduce the symbol i to denote the interval a, b. Okay. And so, the integral, so the remark, the integral is uh, gives the notion of area of course with sign of the region between the graph of the function and the x-axis. Okay, I think this is a very elementary and very clear introduction of the integral and of the, of the definition of this area. I think this could be made and probably should be made at the first very lecture of analysis because here we did not use any limit. The only thing that we use are the idea of supremum and the idea of the infimum. Morally, this uh, uh, problem of the area and its solution through integrals could be used at the beginning in order to justify the needs for the introduction of the infimum and of the supremum, also through some, uh, some um, examples and so on. I, every year I think of changing the, the course in this way, starting immediately from, uh, uh, from integrals in this way. However, here we are, I think it is a uh, very straightforward and uh, elegant way. It's not me who invented it. You can find, for instance, in the book by Prodi, by Giovanni Prodi, an analysis, uh, and, and it is like that. But now there is, a, there is a gap in all I said. The gap is the following. I gave you some definition here, the definition of upper integral and of lower integral, and uh, I have to show that they are real numbers. Uh, they are the, uh, good definitions because otherwise, oh, and that infimum and that supremum are are uh, well uh, uh, well defined. And here, so the question, also if you want to remark, so other definition we gave. So to say well defined, well posed, in other words, <laughs> today is Frank Sinatra day, so equivalently, um, are the lower integral and the upper integral Finite real numbers so and here uh, in order to to show this uh, i 
I give you a notion. This is a quite, a, quite a simple thing that they are really fine. It is true, everything is well defined. But I need, I need a notion uh, later that helps us in understanding very well this point. Okay, so the notion is the notion of a, a refinement of the partition. So definition. Oh, sorry. I want to write definition in red. So, definition, let a P, this capital P, a partition of AB. Another partition, P prime, P prime of the same interval AB, is said to be a refinement of P if P prime contains P. This means that the new partition is made of the point of the old one plus possibly other points. Okay, so picture. Here you have A, B, and uh, you can see that, for instance, red partition P, P, and then a green partition P prime, which is made of the same points of P. Remember that the extremes are always included in this partition. And then other points, P prime. P prime contains P. Okay? And so, from what we said before, that you have uh, intuitively to make your partition thinner and thinner, now I, I would say finer and finer, in order to make your approximation better, so to say, your lower sum higher and your upper sum smaller, this intuitive notion becomes a theorem, okay? Let me call it just a proposition. Uh, but they... Okay, proposition, which is the following. That says, let P be a partition of AB and P prime a refinement of P. Then What I was saying, I was saying that the, the new lower sum with respect to the refinement P prime is better, so it's larger than the old upper sum, and the new, the, sorry, the old lower sum, so it is larger, and the new lower sum, sorry, the new upper sum, I'm getting tired and confused now, the new upper sum is better, so in the sense that it is smaller, it is a better approximation to the area we want, so it's smaller than the old upper sum. Okay, and so let me again try to clarify this point through a picture, here you have A, here you have B, So this is the area you want to compute and uh, consider a very stupid 
partition where you have partition B, you have A, which is X0, B, which is X2, and then you put an X1 here, for instance. And so with respect to the partition B, you have this situation. So for instance, consider only the lower sum in order not to make the picture too confused. This is the lower sum with respect to the partition P. I color it in red. And now consider a, an elementary a basic refinement of it by just introducing one point, a point Z here, for instance. Okay. And now consider the new lower sum. You see that there is only one difference. The difference is this rectangle here. Okay, P, which is contained in P prime. And now, notice that the red area is smaller than the green area, which means that the lower sum of the function F with respect to the partition P is smaller than the lower sum. Sorry better than the I miss the correct green is smaller than the lower sum of f with respect to p prime but the larger a lower sum is the better it is so through this refinement to this very simple refinement that has been made introducing just one point z we got something better. It is not only less or equal, you can also write this. But this is not important, it is important this. So a refinement makes the approximation better and you can also adapt this picture in order to see the same phenomenon with upper sums. Of course, the upper sums, the green upper sum will be lower than the red upper sum because uh, the lowest an upper sum is, the best, the better it is. So let us prove it. This is uh, intuitive, we want to prove it. The proof can be somewhat boring, but I will try to make it clearer than, uh, than a picture, than, uh, as clear as I can at least. So let us consider the case. The case in which, like in the picture, the new partition P prime is obtained by P by adding just one single point Z. Okay, and uh, let us suppose. Oh, this uh, the there is no loss of generality. I want to stress this fact. Why? Because when you have a, a refinement, since uh, a partition is always made of finite many, finitely many point then you can consider every refinement as obtained by adding one point at every step. Okay, so we want to prove this. We just need to prove the statement for one point added to the old partition in order to obtain the new partition. Okay, so there is no loss, no loss of generality. So to fix the notation, we suppose that Z falls inside an interval of the old partition, for instance, the J bars interval. So it is in J bar minus one X J bar. Hmm? So in this case, in the case of the picture here, J bar is equal to one. Here, the, the idea is that the Z will fall somewhere, and this somewhere will be contained in an interval of the old partition. We take this interval open, otherwise we reobtain the same partition. So we want to make this proof more effective. Okay, then the 
we have that the lower sum is sum for j going from 1 to n of the infimum of the j's interval and then delta xj. Let us split this uh, sum in two terms, j from 1 to n and j different from the j bar. The j bar, the j -bar integral is the one that is modified. This is why we isolate it. And so we have mj delta xj. And then outside the sum, we have the j bar interval, mj bar delta x j bar. And so this is equal to sum of j from 1 to n j different from j bar plus let me sorry mj delta xj plus let me be very pedagogic here but i want to be clear mi bar uh, sorry mj bar and here xj bar minus xj bar minus one now notice here that You have here x j bar, here x j bar minus 1, sorry it is the contrary, and the point z falls here inside, this is z. Therefore, you can just rewrite the last term of the sum leaving the first term untouched, mj delta xj plus mj bar, and here you introduce z. So you have xj bar minus z plus mj bar z minus x j bar minus 1. This bar is too high here. Okay. Okay. And now, remember that here, this mj bar is an infimum. So, here you have sum for j from 1 to n, j different from j bar and here mj delta xj plus the infimum of f of x for x in this is closed xj bar minus 1 xj bar times xj bar minus z plus the infimum of f of x for x in, again, x j bar minus 1 x j bar, and here you have z minus x j bar minus 1. Okay, now the key passage, this is the only key passage that we have. The, we notice that the infimum of f of x for x in x j bar minus 1 x j bar is not smaller than the infimum of f of x for x in x j bar minus 1 z. Okay, this uh, sort of writing is somewhat heavy, but the idea is extremely elementary. The idea is that
here we we are here between a and b sorry not a and b xj bar minus one and xj bar and here we introduce the middle point z not the middle point but just the intermediate point and we have a function here and uh, now <clears throat> Now consider this fact, consider that this is the infimum, this brown level is the infimum of f of x in the whole interval on the other hand gray guy here is the infimum. I do a lot of mistakes, sorry. The whole interval is xj1 minus 1, xj bar. And here the gray here is the infimum of f of x for x in xj bar minus 1 set. So you see that the gray level is higher than the brown one. So the infimum of x in the smaller interval, xj bar minus 1, z, is larger than the infimum on the larger interval. And the reason is obvious. When we compute this infimum, we are, we are taking the infimum among a larger set than here. So if, we, if you have a larger set, we have more numbers among whom to extract the infimum. So the infimum can be lower. It is extremely simple. Okay. And, uh, and so in, uh, the picture clarifies this point. This is why this is why the set of f of x for x in x j bar minus 1 x j bar is contained in the set f of x for x in x uh, it is exactly the contrary contains the set f x j bar minus 1 z therefore the infimum in the larger set can take lower lower values now thanks of this uh, observation we can go we can go much uh, uh, farther and analogously So we can say that the infimum of f, again, in the whole interval cannot be larger than the infimum in the second half of the same interval. Very easily. Then, the final computation As we take again the expression here of the lower sum, this is the expression we want to take, and we have uh, the inequality S F P. It is less or equal than the sum on J from one to n, but different from J bar of M J delta x j plus, and now I put here the infima on the smaller interval. So here x in x j bar z that multiplies z minus x j bar plus the infimum of f of x for x in the second half interval, 
which is set xj bar plus 1. But what is that? This is exactly the lower sum of the function f with respect to the new partition p1, p prime. Okay, because these are the intervals with respect to the new partitions. I forgot one. And these are the corresponding infima. So this is all. The end of the proof, but analogously, we have to remark In a pretty analogous way, we have that the upper sum of f with respect to p prime will be lower, so better, than the upper sum of f with respect to f to p. Okay? As a consequence, it's a corollary. As a consequence, the trivial partition P equal to AB, where N is equal to 1 if you want, A is equal to X naught, B is equal to X1. So you just take the interval is the worst one in the sense that for every partition p prime we have that s small s f p is not larger than small s f p prime which of course will be less than capital S F P prime. Less sorry here less S F P. So the worst lower bound and the worst upper bound are given by the trivial partition P, and this is equal to what? To the infimum of F of X for X in A B b minus a, and this is equal to the supremum of f of x, b minus a, x in a, b. This is larger than minus infinity, this is smaller than plus infinity, so they are real number, and here, of course, the upper and lower inter integrals are here. So here we can say that this is less than the lower integral, a, b, f of x dx, this is less than the upper integral, ab, f of x dx. So these two are finite, are finite quantities. So the definitions we gave are well posed. This was necessary from a fundamental point of view to show you that. To do that, I introduced the refinement that here are really not strictly necessary, but we will use the refinements when proving the algebra of integrals. So remember the refinements. And now this is basically the, uh, the theory of what an integral is. Now let me show you how to uh, apply these definitions to very simple example, but we will need another video.